Throughout history, criminals have been punished and executed in ways that today would appear needlessly cruel and barbaric. In Middle Ages, a great number of crimes resulted in the death penalty, therefore the gibbeting cage was designed and authorized, under the Murder Act, to punish extra heinous offenses such as murder, treason, piracy and smuggling by preventing the convicted person's body from receiving a respectable burial. Gibbeting punished criminals even in death and warned the living to toe the line. Gibbeting is also known as hanging in chains, was a spectacular post-mortem punishment of locking most ruthless criminals in human-shaped cages, and hanging them up in public areas for days, weeks, months, years and even decades as a warning to other existing or potential criminals. In most cases, criminals were executed before being gibbeted. However, criminals were occasionally gibbeted alive and then left to die of starvation and thirst. Whereas gibbeting originated in the Middle Ages, its popularity in England peaked in the 1740s. However, it was officially enforced later by the 1752 Murder Act, which required bodies of convicted criminals to be publicly gibbeted and dissected. What's interesting about gibbeting is that only men were gibbeted. Since female corpses were in high demand from surgeons and anatomists, female criminals were always dissected rather than gibbeted. Shockingly, the gibbeting of criminals was considered a great show. Happy crowds gathered to see it, sometimes in the tens of thousands. Apparently, gibbeting was the subject of an uncanny fascination. Although watching a gibbeting was quite enjoyable for many, living near a gibbet was disgusting and uncomfortable. Gibbeted bodies could stink so badly that nearby residents had to shut their windows to prevent the wind from carrying the body's stench into their homes. In addition, the gibbets frightened people with its frightening creaks and clangs. The wind added creepiness to them, making them twist and sway. Typically, gibbets would only be removed when the corpse turned into nothing more than a skeleton. Hence, gibbets often stood for years. Authorities made it difficult to remove the bodies by hanging them from poles 30 feet high. Sometimes they made the pillars even taller. Blacksmiths who were tasked with making gibbet cages often they had difficulties as they were often unfamiliar with the design. As a result, the cages' designs varied largely. In addition, they were expensive to make. Some people were against gibbeting on the grounds that it was barbaric. But despite people's objections to the practice, the horrors gibbets caused their neighbors, and how difficult and expensive they were to make, authorities kept on using this horrific form of execution. At that time, authorities believed that the best way to stop crime was to subject them to the most horrific punishment possible. They saw gibbeting as a way to deter crimes of all kinds. However, despite the appalling nature of the gibbets, crime never declined in England during the time the practice was used. This is probably why it was abolished in 1834. Although gibbeting is a thing of the past, remnants of the practice can be seen across England. There are still a dozen gibbet cages in the country, most of them in small museums, 